Okay, to access the Preferences form, we click on the Preferences button on the opening screen. This gives us a wide range of options for setting up the game to our liking. So on the first tab, we have Gameplay Options. Starting at the top left, we have the Swing Influence, which lets us either set up the traditional three-click swing meter, or choosing None, which is the standard mode. Each shot is going to be executed based on the golfer's ability. Um, swing meter still takes into account the game or the uh, golfer's ability, but none is strictly uh, a shot pattern based on based on that. Down below, we can set the difficulty of the meter. All the way on hard, um, you're going to do very well to break par, and on easy, it'll be pretty easy. And again, this only applies when using the tr traditional three-click swing meter. If you're not using that, the meter difficulty has no influence at all. Shot setup aids. This determines what we want to be shown to us on the screen versus what we have to kind of figure out on our own. The adjusted carry yardage shows us the distance that the club's going to go, adjusted for various options. If we turn that off, all we see is the stock distance, the standard distance for the club. Below that are options for the uh, hole slope and live percentage and whether or not we want the uh, yardage shown to us for the club to be adjusted for that or if unchecked, we have to do it ourselves. And then showing the live percentage. Generally, we're going to want that on, but uh, if you want to experiment with turning it off and guessing at what the lie might be, you could do that too. Automatically reading the green on short game shots means that when we click chip or pitch, for example, it's going to set up an aiming point according to the slope on the green to get us as close to the hole as, as it can. If not, when we choose the shot, it's going to aim directly at the hole and we're going to have to manually aim the shot to account for slopes. Showing the carry line shows the dotted line on short game shots that shows where the shot's going to carry to. And if we don't want the computer assist panel available, we can check this box to hide it. Below that we have some options for the game screen cursor and the color of the mouse label on the green, when we move the mouse over the green and get the yardage, we can choose lighter, darker, or black, depending on, our, on your preference and uh, how well that blends in with the green. Under miscellaneous preferences, we have some more options for the game screen. The shot view mode, whether we want it to stay fixed or zoom in to the spot that the ball lands or before the ball lands. Show the zoomed green view is the pop-up green when the ball is within about eight feet of the hole. This show terrain option automatically shows the terrain around the green or around the hole before each shot. We can uh, set how many yards we want that to show up automatically within, or we can turn it off or have it always show up. Computer post shot analysis with computer control golfers. It will pop up the result of the shot after each shot. If this is unchecked, it will go straight to the next shot. We have animation speed and putt speed. You can experiment with setting those to whatever you like. And then the size of the ball and how long you'd like to wait before a computer player hits its shot. Some sound options down below for volumes, for crowds and casual rounds, and for the announcer on the first tee in tournaments. Okay, let's move on to the season tab. Here we can choose what year we want our season to start on, what year is displayed on the schedule, and then the standard driving distance average, and some modifiers for the particular era that you're using. These can have a significant effect. For example, if we lower the putting slider by 1.5, everybody in the uh, season is going to be rated about one and a half lower effectively than their real rating. So we're going to reduce the putting ability for everybody across the board. And then we have the starting month for the schedule, the type of wood, whether we want metal or, or wood, woods, and the default T for when we start a, when we create a casual round or a tournament, that's what it's going to default to. Under the exemptions tab, exemptions give players automatic bids into tournaments or into tour seasons if you advance to another year. For example, winning a tour event, in this case, exempts a player to the next four majors and to the next 
tour season. Essentially, they earn their tour card for the next season. We can check this box if we don't want to use these at all. And um, if we're using manual fields, then it also won't automatically add players to the fields. Reset options. We have options to reset the current season folder. We can reset the current year only. Reset only the stats. This will not reset the tournament results. It'll just clear out the stats to zero. Reset the core stats and then default all club selections. A complete, complete reset resets all the stats to zero and clears out all of the events on the schedule, resets all the events so we can start from scratch with the season. Records, we have options to clear season and all-time records or reset all-time records to historical records. Add final season to records adds the complete season stats to the record book. For world rankings, we can reset oval rank, overall um, reset world rankings according to overall ratings. So the player with the best overall rating will get the number one world ranking and on down from there. We can set all ratings or all rankings to zero and start from scratch. Or we can reset to the start of the season. This will reset to the actual rankings as of the start of the season that are included with the season file. Or if we have a file in CSV format that has first name, last name, comma, world ranking points, we can import that in to use. And then we can reset the team stats.